Jump.
If Robert Mugabe were to dress up as Batman, <laughs> massive relief could be felt if Batman drove the Batmobile, changed his name to Neil, and was seen impersonating snowmen in Lapland. <laughs> if Shashi Tarot were to write his own jokes. <laughs> smile, it might do some good for a little while. If Hugo Chavez had a sense of humour, there might be less threats on every rumour. If Jacob Zuma were to roll around the place, he might be concerned less with race. If Berlusconi were to laugh at his face, his plastic surgeon would go out of business. <laughs> if, every, if that rich businessman would laugh at their own existence, they might spend less on themselves hence. Because it's irresponsible to sit in a fancy office accumulating more and more, and one can laugh at his insult from these to the poor. It's irresponsible to be a millionaire when those around can't feed their families. To laugh at this situation is to recognise the humiliation of millions. <laughs> Laughter is not neglecting important issues and tends not to result in the misuse of power in the same way as being serious about religion, for example, makes one delirious and leads to conflict and devastation because some people can't laugh at the Bible or the nation. If we if we become important people and have to be sweet and meet and greet all, other type of fellow, if we didn't dress like Othello in a melon product shade of yellow, it might raise the spirits of life and therefore a connection where we can drive a sense of common being. Like football, the Beatles and peeing, we share these things in seeing comedy because rarely do we laugh alone and when we laugh we are positive. Surely because it's as if we attack divides and separations, leaving fights and devastation. If all artists had a sense of comedy, this might be the perfect remedy for crap films like Viva Vendetta, which are awful because nobody had ever told the maker of their ineptness to make films in the spirit of friendliness, which attacks the ego, the antithesis of humour. Egocentrics are not funny, and could get so much further in life if they began to see how pathetic their concepts and conceptions of life itself are. Is life here not to be enjoyed? We look back on times of laughter with fondness and fondness as if it were the highest level one could reach. Boring paintings are those which reflect where nature complements itself. Interesting ones highlight paradoxes, stress irony and the natural comedy. There is no argument that egocentrics are striving for something higher, as anyone who's seen the appalling film we presented would already know. So what is it that dictators have in common with bad artists? The inability to grip basic concepts of comedy. It's laughter that makes wars end, not tears. There was plenty of time to cry at the beginning and in the middle of every conflict, but when they laugh, the violence ends. Laughing makes us intelligent, but at the same time realistic. What is intelligence if not realising how stupid we were? And laughing at stupid people is one of life's great pleasures. We <laughs> <laughs> gain awareness from multiple perspectives. To ridicule yourself is to see yourself in the eyes of someone who thinks you're such an idiot. Pathetic acts in the name of bravery would be fewer if we saw them as stupid. Comedy has given so much to the human race, and it's horrible to ignore that. It's given us hope and union and all that. It, helps, it gives us an aside from tediousness and a satisfying comfort where there is a lack of meaning. To you, look, my thoughts were put best in somebody else's speech recently. In the words of our film teacher, Kurush, to the needy, don't get religious and don't get greedy.